I thought my father-in-law just missed his son's ex. Turns out, he was having an emotional affair with her. When I finally confronted him, I uncovered a shocking family secret that tore everything apart. I'm Ella, 30 female, and I've been married to my husband Shane, 32 male, for three years now. We met in college during our final year. I was the quiet bookworm, always tucked away in the library, while Shane was the life of every party. Opposites attract, right? We started dating after he asked me to tutor him in literature, and the rest, as they say, is history. When I first met Shane's family, they seemed welcoming. His mom, Barbara, 55 female, immediately took me under her wing, showing me old photo albums and sharing embarrassing stories about Shane's childhood. His dad, Greg, 58 male, was a bit more reserved but friendly enough. He'd crack jokes during family dinners and seemed genuinely interested in getting to know me. Shane had told me about his ex fiancee Susan, early in our relationship. They'd been high school sweethearts, dated through college, and got engaged right after graduation. But things fell apart when Susan got a job offer abroad. Long distance proved too challenging, and they called off the engagement after a year. It was a mutual decision, and Shane assured me he had moved on. The first six months of our marriage were blissful. We moved into a small apartment, adopted a cat named Whiskers, and spent our weekends exploring local farmers' markets or binge-watching TV shows. Family dinners at Greg and Barbara's became a monthly tradition, always filled with laughter and good food. But then, things started to change. It was subtle at first, so subtle that I almost missed it. During one of our family dinners, about six months into our marriage, Greg started reminiscing about past gatherings. He said, remember when Susan used to make those amazing apple pies for Thanksgiving? Nobody could resist having seconds. I brushed it off initially. After all, Susan had been part of their family for years. It was natural for them to have memories of her. But as time went on, I noticed Greg bringing up Susan more and more, especially when Shane wasn't around. One day, Greg and I were alone in the kitchen washing dishes after a family lunch. He started talking about how Susan was such a whiz at organizing family events. He went on and on about how she planned this elaborate surprise party for Shane's 25th birthday, with a scavenger hunt across the city and ending with a rooftop dinner. Greg said, that girl really knew how to make things special. I tried to smile and nod, but inside, I felt a twinge of inadequacy. I had organized a small gathering at our apartment for Shane's last birthday, nothing as grand as Susan's surprise. Was I not doing enough? The comments kept coming. At Christmas, while we were decorating the tree, Greg mentioned how Susan always knew exactly where to place each ornament to make the tree look perfect. During summer, he'd talk about the beach trip Susan used to plan for the whole family. What made it worse was that Greg would always wait until Shane wasn't around to make these comments. It felt like he was trying to create some sort of competition between Susan and me, one that I never signed up for. I started dreading family gatherings. Every time Greg opened his mouth, I braced myself for another Susan story. It was exhausting, always feeling like I was being compared to this perfect ex who could do no wrong. I tried to talk to Barbara about it once. We were preparing dinner together, and I casually mentioned how Greg seemed to bring up Susan a lot. Barbara just laughed it off, saying, Oh, you know how men are with their memories. Don't pay it any mind, dear. But I could see a flicker of. Something in her eyes. Concern. Annoyance. I couldn't quite tell. As for Shane, he seemed oblivious to the whole situation. Whenever he was around, Greg was the perfect father-in-law, asking about my job at the local library and commenting on how happy Shane seemed. It was like Jekyll and Hyde, and I felt like I was going crazy. I started to withdraw from family gatherings. I'd make excuses about work or not feeling well. Shane noticed and asked if everything was okay, but how could I tell him that his father was making me feel like a second-rate replacement for his ex? Things came to a head last month during Shane's birthday party. I had spent weeks planning a surprise camping trip for Shane and a few of his closest friends. I knew he loved the outdoors but rarely got the chance to go camping due to his busy work schedule as a software engineer. I had everything planned out, the perfect spot by a lake, all the gear, and even arranged for his boss to give him a long weekend off. When we revealed the surprise to Shane, he was thrilled. His face lit up, and he hugged me tightly, thanking me for remembering his love for camping. I felt on top of the world, finally feeling like I had done something truly special for my husband. But then, Greg chimed in. He said, this reminds me of that surprise party Susan threw for Shane's 25th birthday. Now that was something else. You should have seen it, she had the whole city involved in a scavenger hunt. Shane was solving clues all day, and it ended with a romantic dinner on a rooftop overlooking the city. Susan always had a knack for grand gestures. I felt my heart sink. In one moment, Greg had managed to completely overshadow my surprise with a memory of Susan's party from years ago. I looked at Shane, hoping he would say something, but he just looked uncomfortable and changed the subject. That night, after everyone had left, I finally broke down. Shane found me crying in our bedroom, and I couldn't hold it in anymore. Through tears, I told him everything. How his dad had been constantly bringing up Susan, always comparing me to her, and how it made me feel inadequate and unwelcome in the family. Shane was shocked. He had no idea this had been going on, as Greg was careful to only make these comments when Shane wasn't around. He was angry at his dad and felt terrible that I had been dealing with this for so long on my own. We stayed up late into the night, talking about it. Shane shared more about his relationship with Susan, how they had grown apart even before the long-distance challenge. 
He reassured me that he had no lingering feelings for her and that he was happier with me than he had ever been. We decided that Shane would confront his dad about this behavior. The next day, Shane went to talk to Greg alone. He came back looking frustrated and upset. Apparently, Greg had brushed off Shane's concerns, saying he was just reminiscing about old times and that I was being too sensitive. This dismissive response made me realize that Greg's behavior wasn't just innocent nostalgia, it was a deliberate attempt to undermine my place in the family. I felt hurt, angry, and betrayed. I had always tried to be a good daughter-in-law, but it seemed like nothing I did would ever be good enough for Greg. Shane and I decided to take a step back from family gatherings for a while. We needed time to figure out how to deal with this situation without it causing a permanent rift in the family. But I couldn't help feeling resentful. Why couldn't Greg just accept me? Why was he so hung up on Susan, who had been out of Shane's life for years? As we navigate this difficult situation, I find myself wondering if I'm overreacting. Am I being too sensitive about Greg's comments? Should I just ignore them and move on? Or do I have a right to feel hurt and angry about constantly being compared to Shane's ex? I love Shane, and I want to have a good relationship with his family. But I also need to protect my own mental health and self-esteem. I'm at a loss for what to do next. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Update 1. It's been about a month since my last post, and a lot has happened. First of all, thank you to everyone who offered advice and support. It really helped me gain perspective on the situation. After reading your comments, Shane and I decided that we needed to have a serious conversation with Greg, but this time, with Barbara present. We figured having Shane's mom there might help keep things civil and possibly provide a different perspective. We invited Greg and Barbara over for dinner last weekend. I spent the entire day cooking, partly to keep myself busy and partly because I wanted everything to be perfect. I made Greg's favorite lasagna, a recipe I'd learned from Barbara. As I layered the pasta and sauce, I couldn't help but wonder if Susan had ever made this for him. When they arrived, the atmosphere was tense. Greg barely looked at me, focusing all his attention on Shane. Barbara, on the other hand, seemed to sense that something was off. She kept glancing between Greg and me with a worried expression. We managed to get through dinner with polite small talk. Shane talked about his latest project at work, I shared some funny stories from the library, and Barbara filled us in on the neighborhood gossip. Greg remained unusually quiet throughout the meal. After dinner, we moved to the living room. Shane started the conversation. He explained to his parents how Greg's constant mentions of Susan were affecting our relationship and making me feel unwelcome in the family. As Shane spoke, I watched Greg's face. He looked surprised at first, then defensive. To our surprise, Barbara seemed genuinely shocked. She turned to Greg and asked, Have you really been doing this? Greg tried to brush it off at first, saying he was just reminiscing about old times. But Barbara wasn't having it. She said, Greg, Susan hasn't been part of this family for years. Why are you so fixated on her? That's when things took an unexpected turn. Greg got defensive and started ranting about how Susan was the daughter he never had, how she understood him in a way no one else did. He went on about how Susan would call him regularly to check in, how she remembered every important date, how she always knew the perfect gift to get him. As he was talking, I noticed Barbara's face getting redder and redder. Finally, she exploded. She yelled at Greg, saying, So that's why you've been so distant lately. You've been pining after our son's ex fiance like some lovesick teenager. It turns out, Greg and Barbara had been having problems in their marriage for a while. Greg had been emotionally distant, and Barbara couldn't figure out why. Now, it all made sense to her. She was furious, not just at Greg's behavior towards me, but at his emotional affair, as she called it, with Susan. The evening ended with Greg storming out and Barbara in tears. Shane was stunned, caught between anger at his dad and concern for his mom. I felt terrible for being the catalyst for this family drama, but at the same time, I was relieved that everything was finally out in the open. The next day, Barbara called us. She apologized profusely for Greg's behavior and assured us that she would be dealing with him. She also thanked me for bringing this to light, saying she had been feeling like something was off in her marriage for a while but couldn't pin it down. Barbara shared more about their marriage during that call. She and Greg had been high school sweethearts, married right after college. They had Shane Young, and while they were happy, Barbara always felt like Greg regretted not experiencing more of life before settling down. She wondered if that's why he was so attached to Susan, she represented the youth and freedom he felt he had missed out on. As for Greg, he's been radio silent. We haven't heard from him since that night. Shane tried calling him a few times, but all calls went straight to voicemail. It's been hard on Shane, seeing his family fall apart like this. He's been quiet and withdrawn, spending long hours at work. This whole situation has turned out to be much more complicated than we initially thought. It's not just about Greg comparing me to Susan anymore, it's about the problems in Greg and Barbara's marriage, and Greg's inappropriate attachment to his son's ex. Shane is struggling to process all of this. He feels betrayed by his dad and worried about his mom. We're giving Barbara space to deal with Greg, but we've let her know we're here if she needs anything. As for me, I'm still processing everything. On one hand, I feel vindicated, my feelings were valid, and Greg's behavior was indeed inappropriate. On the other hand, I feel guilty for being the spark that ignited this family crisis. I've been throwing myself into work at the library, staying late to organize events and read to the kids during story time. It's been a welcome distraction from the family drama. 
Jane and I have been spending our evenings talking, trying to make sense of everything that's happened. We're taking things day by day right now. Jane and I are focusing on supporting each other and being there for Barbara if she needs us. We're also considering family therapy once things settle down a bit. I'll keep you updated on how things progress. Again, thank you all for your support and advice. It really helped us find the courage to confront this issue head on. Update 2. It's been two weeks since the confrontation with Greg, and things have been interesting, to say the least. First off, Greg finally broke his silence. He called Shane last week, asking to meet up for coffee. Shane was hesitant but agreed, hoping to get some answers. I decided to stay home and give them space to talk. While Shane was out, I found myself pacing around our apartment, anxiously waiting for him to return. When Shane came back, he looked exhausted. He slumped onto our couch, and I could see the emotional toll the meeting had taken on him. Apparently, Greg had opened up about a lot of things. He admitted that he had been struggling with depression for the past few years, something he had been hiding from everyone, including Barbara. Greg told Shane about how he had always dreamed of traveling the world and pursuing photography, but he put those dreams aside to start a family. He loved Barbara and Shane, but part of him always wondered about the life he could have had. When Susan came into their lives, she reminded Greg of his younger self, ambitious, adventurous, full of dreams. According to Greg, Susan represented a time when he felt needed and appreciated. She would often come to him for advice or help with surprises for Shane, and it made Greg feel important. When Shane and Susan broke up, Greg lost that source of validation, but he never dealt with those feelings properly. Greg also confessed that he had been calling Susan occasionally over the past few years, usually when he was feeling particularly low. He insisted that Susan had no idea about his feelings and that their conversations were always innocent, but he realized now how inappropriate it was. Shane was understandably upset and conflicted. He was angry at his dad for the emotional affair and for making me feel unwelcome, but he also felt sympathy for his father's struggles with mental health. He shared with me how he had always seen his dad as this strong, unshakable figure, and it was hard to reconcile that image with the vulnerable man Greg had revealed himself to be. Meanwhile, Barbara has been staying with her sister. She's still furious with Greg but has agreed to consider marriage counseling once she's had some time to process everything. Shane has been calling her daily, checking in and offering support. It's been hard on him, feeling caught between his parents. As for me, I'm still trying to wrap my head around all of this. I feel a mix of emotions, anger at Greg for his behavior, sympathy for his mental health struggles, worry for Barbara, and concern for Shane who's caught in the middle of all this. I've been doing a lot of reflection on my own family history. My parents have been happily married for 35 years, and I realized I had taken that stability for granted. Seeing the cracks in Greg and Barbara's relationship has made me appreciate my own parents' marriage even more. Shane and I have been talking a lot about boundaries. We've decided that while we want to support Greg in getting help for his depression, we also need to protect our own relationship and my mental well-being. We've agreed that for now, any family gatherings will be supervised, no more one-on-one -on -one time between Greg and me. We've also started seeing a family therapist to help us navigate this complex situation. It's early days, but it's already helping us process our emotions and communicate better. In our last session, we talked about how this situation has affected our own relationship. Shane admitted feeling guilty, like he should have noticed what was happening sooner. I reassured him that it wasn't his fault, that Greg had been careful to hide his behavior. I'm still not sure how I feel about Greg. Part of me understands that his actions were driven by his own pain and insecurities, but another part of me is still hurt by the months of comparisons and subtle put-downs. I know it will take time to rebuild trust, if that's even possible. For now, we're taking it one day at a time. Greg has agreed to start therapy, both individually and potentially with Barbara if she agrees. Shane is being supportive but is also setting clear boundaries with his dad. As always, I appreciate your support and advice. This situation has turned out to be far more complicated than I ever imagined, but I'm hopeful that with time and effort, we can find a way forward. Update 3. It's been a month since my last update, and I wanted to share the latest developments in our family saga. The biggest news is that Barbara has agreed to return home and attempt to work things out with Greg. They've started couples therapy, and Greg is continuing with his individual sessions as well. It's a long road ahead, but they're both committed to trying to save their marriage. Barbara told me over coffee last week that she's seeing a side of Greg she hasn't seen in years, vulnerable, open, and genuinely trying to change. As for Shane and me, we've maintained our boundaries with Greg. We see him and Barbara for family dinners once a week, always together, never one-on-one. -on -one. It's been awkward at times, but it's getting better slowly. The first dinner was tense, with long silences and forced small talk. But each week, it gets a little easier. Last Sunday, we even managed to laugh together over a board game after dinner. Greg has apologized to me directly. He took me aside during one of our family dinners and expressed genuine remorse for his behavior. He acknowledged how hurtful and inappropriate his actions were, and promised to do better. I appreciated his apology, but I've made it clear that rebuilding trust will take time. I can see he's trying, he asks about my work at the library and seems genuinely interested in my answers. He even suggested we start a small book club, just the two of us, as a way to bond. I'm considering it, but I'm not quite ready for one-on-one -on -one time with him yet. The most surprising development came last week. We received a call from Susan. Apparently, Greg had reached out to her as part of his therapy process, to apologize for involving her in his emotional issues. 
Susan was shocked to learn about everything that had happened and wanted to clear the air with us. We met Susan for coffee, and it was surprisingly nice. She's happily married now with a kid on the way. She apologized profusely for any part she might have played in the drama, even unknowingly. She also shared some insights into her relationship with Greg when she and Shane were together, which helped us understand the situation better. She told us how Greg had always been supportive of her career ambitions, something she felt her own father lacked. It made me realize that perhaps Greg saw in Susan the daughter he never had, rather than just fixating on her as Shane's ex. Meeting Susan face to face and seeing her as a real person, not just the idealized version Greg had built up in his mind, was healing in a way I didn't expect. It helped me let go of some of the resentment I'd been holding onto. She's just a normal person, with her own flaws and struggles, not the perfect ex I'd built up in my mind. As for Shane and me, this whole experience has brought us closer together. We've had to navigate some tough conversations and make difficult decisions, but we've done it as a team. Our communication has improved, and I feel more secure in our relationship than ever. We've started a new tradition of weekly date nights, making sure to carve out time for just us amidst all the family drama. We're still taking things day by day. Family gatherings are getting less tense, but there's still an undercurrent of awkwardness that will take time to dissipate. Greg is making efforts to connect with me in appropriate ways, asking about my work and interests without any comparisons to Susan. Barbara is slowly starting to trust Greg again, but it's a process. She's also apologized to me for not noticing what was happening sooner. We've actually grown closer through this ordeal, which is an unexpected silver lining. We've started having regular coffee dates, just the two of us, which has been really nice. While things are far from perfect, I feel cautiously optimistic about the future. We're all working on healing, both individually and as a family. It's not easy, and there are still tough days, but we're moving in the right direction. Last weekend, we all went on a picnic together, Shane, me, Greg, and Barbara. It was the first time we'd done something like that since everything came out. As we sat on the blanket, sharing sandwiches and laughing at Greg's terrible dad jokes, I felt a glimmer of hope. Maybe, just maybe, we could become a real family again.